In Unit 1, we saw a dramatic increase in living standards with the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. In Unit 2, we explained what started the Industrial Revolution and why the world was so poor for so long. With the help of economic models, we economists can answer interesting questions like that. So, the Industrial Revolution started in Britain because of a long-term shift in factor prices. Labor was becoming more expensive and energy and capital were becoming cheaper. With the change in factor prices, British manufacturers shifted to more energy and capital intensive technologies. Those cheaper technologies freed up resources which could be allocated to the production of novel and better machines. It changed the landscape of the British lands. From an agrarian and crafts-based society, Britain was gradually transformed into a producer of world-beating manufacturing technologies. All this comes to say that prices of inputs and outputs can not only direct incentives in various industries, they can change the fate of nations. We also saw that the Malthusian world was not a very fun place to live. For centuries, uh, it was mired in misery, caused by a slow technological progress, which barely allowed for more people to exist, but not for a better existence. Um, and finally, what we have learned here is that the transition to a sustained and faster growth is possible. However, we need a sustained technological progress for this to happen, a conclusion we will revisit in the second year when we talk about endogenous technological improvement. So much for the big picture on how we came to live um, the way we, we do today. From next week onwards, we will dive into how individuals make choices. So keep watching and see you in the next unit. Thanks.